Hi Libras, uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video I'm going to talk about uh, the transits in July. So yeah, let's see, we have a busy month uh, ahead of us. Uh, so uh, on July 1st, uh, well technically on June 30th, uh, we have the conjunction of Sun and Mercury uh, on the 8th degree of Cancer. Uh, so that means this conjunction uh, happens in your uh, tenth house and tenth house is the house of your career your reputation okay um, like your um, life purpose like um, yeah so basically like your career social status um, so yeah and the, this conjunction um, means that there will be some sort of uh, I don't know important communication because uh, the Sun is like uh, think of it as the boss of our solar system and then Mercury is the uh, planet of communication uh, it's the messenger uh, so yeah like uh, the messenger communicating with the boss so uh, that can mean something regarding your career like some decision maybe um, your boss might decide something uh, and then what I'll say, it might be some news regarding your career, so yeah. And then on July 3rd, we have a full moon uh, in Capricorn on the 11th degree of Capricorn. Uh, that means this full moon is happening in your fourth house, okay? Uh, and the sun is in your 10th house. So again, the career house and uh, like your house of home, your family. Mm, so this kind of like uh, lights up the work-life balance stuff. Um, so yeah, that uh, topic is going to be somehow prominent for you uh, on July 3rd. Uh, so yeah, and uh, the thing is, this uh, full moon doesn't make any harsh aspects. Uh, this is not like the full moon that we had in uh, June. Remember the full moon in Sagittarius. That full moon was tense because there were two uh, T-squares in the sky on that day. So yeah, it must have been tense. And even if like you didn't feel anything on the day of the full moon itself, you might have felt something like maybe three days or two days after the full moon, okay? Or maybe a couple of days before the full moon itself. Uh, so yeah, um, in my case, for example, I really felt depressed. Like there was this like some harsh conversation that I had like three days after the full moon. So yeah, and uh, it's been weird since then. Like I cannot wait for the next full moon. So yeah, anyway. Um, this full moon uh, doesn't make any bad aspects uh, and it makes a trine to Jupiter in Taurus uh, this is a very positive aspect and uh, it makes a sextile to Saturn in Pisces now remember um, Capricorn is ruled by uh, Saturn so when the ruler uh, makes a positive aspect that's like uh, extra good so yeah um, you know normally during the full moon especially when there are like harsh aspects we might feel like moody angry like uh, emotional like overly emotional sensitive like uh, irritable uh, on the edge basically uh, but uh, with this full moon like uh, we might not be as moody like uh, yes emotions are gonna be there because like uh, think of it in this way the sea tides uh, you know the moon influences the sea tides and when there's a full moon there's like lots of water at the beach Mm, and now think of like uh, our bodies like which, which is made up of like 80% water uh, Yeah, we are also obviously influenced by uh, the moon. So uh, during uh, the full moon so We usually feel much more emotional. So at this full moon uh, Yes, we are going to be emotional, but it's gonna be uh, more emotional in a positive sense like it, think of it as like uh, our cups are f uh, full like um, and uh, this uh, full moon occurs like right before July 4th, so think of it like this way. Um, you party uh, at this full moon uh, with your family, let's say, because it's in your fourth house. Yeah, and you feel positive emotions when you're like uh, spending time with your family. Yeah, th and that can be uh, the manifestation, I guess, of this uh, full moon. So yeah, and uh, what else uh, did I want to mention? This full moon is not a lunar eclipse, so don't expect like some major endings, major culminations. Uh, it's gonna be like uh, something minor, okay? Maybe you've been working on some project and now you're gonna complete it around this uh, full moon. And especially if this is in your fourth house, so maybe it's something uh, in your home, maybe it's some renovation you've been uh, doing, you've been making in your home. Like, uh, so yeah, that can mean, um, yeah, this one can mean that. Um, now, on July 6th, we have uh, a mini T-square 
uh, involving the Moon, Venus, Mars and Uranus. Uh, yeah, so on July 6th, uh, people may be a little bit, um, I don't know, like uh, on the edge, um, a bit irritable. Yeah, you yourself might be like that, so be patient with yourself and with others. And the good thing is, this transit lasts for only one day, because the Moon moves very quickly, changes signs every like uh, two and a half days. So yeah, this, uh, this transit, the T-square is gonna last for only one day. Uh, it's not gonna be like the T-square we had in June, which lasted for like uh, two weeks, like uh, almost a month, so it started in May. But yeah, anyway. Um, on July 9th, uh, we have the last quarter Moon in Aries. What does this mean? So the last quarter moon means uh, it is time to sort of like wrap up the things that began uh, with the new moon in Gemini in June. Yeah, so take this time, uh, the week that starts after July 9th, uh, take that time to recharge your batteries, like recharge your social batteries, get ready for the next new moon in Cancer. Yeah, so uh, don't uh, waste energy trying to start something new because it is not going to take off the ground. Uh, let me give you an example. Mm. In May, I was having some problems and because I was in such panic, I forgot to look at the transits and like I found some project to work on. And uh, so yeah, I packed all my stuff. I thought I was gonna go, but somehow I couldn't find the uh, like, uh, means to get there. And because of the delay, the other person ended up uh, actually canceling this project. So yeah, and when I looked at the trends, I realized that I've been trying to do this like uh, during this week, week after the uh, last photo moon, like uh, the week before the new moon. So yeah, like uh, in your case also, like don't waste energy trying to start. Wait until July 17th, uh, okay, to start new projects, or at least like two days before the new moon. Uh, so yeah. Um, Next, uh, on July 10th, uh, we have Mars entering Virgo uh, until August 27th. So this means uh, Mars is going to enter your 12th house. And 12th house is like, uh, it's a mysterious house. Uh, it's hard to like um, use like obvious uh, descriptions for that house. It's the house of like illusions, isolation, creativity, spirituality. It is our subconscious. Um, it is where we like store all the memories and stuff like because it is the last house It's where the traumas are our subconscious. What else? Uh, it is also the house of secrets mm, So yeah, Mars entering that house uh, can mean like uh, I guess like I don't know you might feel tired because uh, the because Mars is a planet of energy and uh, the 12th house is like uh, the house of self undoing, like um, the, where things melt basically, and Mars's energy basically melts. People who have Mars and Pisces tend to be like really sleepy, they feel like they are tired all the time. So, yeah, like, um, or uh, the other interpretation for this transit might, me might be that you might have more dreams at night because Mars activates uh, dreams and 12th house is uh, 12th house rules dreams and sleep. So, yeah. And then what else? Um, on July 11th, we have Mercury entering Leo uh, until July 28th. So yeah, uh, Mercury is gonna spend uh, around the three weeks in your 11th house. So that might be the time when you communicate more with your friends, um, texting, chatting, uh, yeah, like hanging out with friends. Uh, and you know, this is summer and it's a normal thing to do. Uh, so yeah, and then uh, on July, uh, 17th we have a new moon in cancer on the 24th degree yay um, so uh, this new moon is gonna happen in your 10th house um, and the uh, 10th house as I said it's your work and so maybe you will receive some news regarding your work some new, new project maybe mm, yeah and then what else um, this new moon uh, is not a solar eclipse so don't expect like uh, the start of a completely new career or your like social status to transform completely uh, no not like that it's gonna be some minor news regarding your career uh, what else so and this new moon mm, makes a harsh aspect to pluto uh, it makes an opposition to pluto on the 29th degree of uh, capricorn remember pluto re-entered capricorn at the end of like uh, no sometime in the middle of june so yeah um, it, 
it might feel a little bit tense. Uh, so imagine your work and then Pluto in your house of home, your family. Uh, yeah, there might be some sort of tension. But the thing is, new moons are not as emotional as full moons. Again, like let me give you that example of the sea tides. Uh, so when there is a new moon, the water is very far away from the beach. Like um, it's like low tide, I think. Yeah. Um, so even though there is this harsh aspect, don't uh, think that you will be like uh, emotional or like super irritable. Not like that. And uh, this new moon is not completely bad because uh, it makes a trine to Neptune in Pisces, okay, uh, in your sixth house. And uh, what else? Uh, it makes uh, a sextile uh, to Uranus uh, on the 22nd degree of Taurus. So you, even though this uh, new moon receives a harsh aspect, there is still support, some, si some sort of support uh, for you, okay? Um, next, uh, so yeah, at this new moon, expect to receive news, decisions, announcements, uh, because those things arrive after new moons. Uh, and if you uh, are thinking of starting some new project, uh, try to start that after this new moon. I don't know if you have noticed this, uh, but uh, if you have, like, you, you'll agree that, like, uh, usually the news decisions uh, arrive after new moons. Uh, yeah. And then, on the same day uh, as this new moon, we have North Node entering Aries. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, that should be exciting for you guys uh, because uh, Aries, uh, North Node, it's going to enter your seventh house, your house of relationships. So yeah, that, that means a lot of Libras are very likely to get married uh, or start some significant relationship uh, this year or uh, next year. Okay, so you will have a year and a half um, to, yeah, like, um, to get married, basically. This is really good. And so the last time uh, North Node was in Aries was 18 years ago because uh, North Node takes uh, 18 years to come back to the same sign. So yeah, try to remember what happened in 2005 or, and 2006. Okay, something significant uh, must have happened uh, relationship-wise uh, for you guys. Yeah, um, what else? And the North Node arrival in your 7th house means that the eclipses are going to uh, happen in your 7th house. The first one already happened in Aries, uh, like in April. So uh, that should have given you a hint of what this year and next year is going to be like. Uh, yeah. And uh, on July 22nd, Venus stations retrograde uh, on the 28th degree of Leo. Now this is significant for you guys Libras because uh, you are ruled by Venus. And so Venus goes retrograde, it means uh, it's time for you guys to reevaluate your values, your relationships, uh, your aesthetics even, like your style. Uh, because Venus rules all those things. Uh, you will reevaluate re how you spend money because the Venus also rules money. Um, yeah, and so uh, the thing about uh, Venus retrograde is that it uh, happens in the same sign every eight years. Uh, that means uh, last time uh, Venus was retrograde in Leo uh, was in August 2015. Try to remember what happened in August 2015. Uh, the same uh, themes are going to be triggered this time again, but um, obviously the circumstances are a little bit different because the outer planets uh, will be making different uh, aspects to this Venus retrograde. For example, in 2015, Venus was making a trine to Uranus, but this time it's going to be making a square to Uranus. So yeah, it's going to be a little bit different, but the same area of your life is activated. So uh, in your case, uh, Leo is your 11th house. So you will be reevaluating maybe your friendships. Maybe some old friend is going to return. Okay, because 11th house is friendships. And also Venus generally uh, rules uh, lovers. So uh, maybe it will bring some old uh, love um, back into your life and he's gonna, I don't know, wanna catch up uh, or something. But I would say that's not a good idea uh, to get back with an ex because uh, you wouldn't have broken up with them if you were compatible, would you? Um, what else? Those of you who recently broke up with your uh, significant other, maybe during this uh, retrograde time, uh, you will make up, okay? So you will have this uh, period from July 22nd until like uh, end of August or early September. I need to double check that. So Venus goes retrograde for 40 days. 
Mm, so yeah, and I take that time to reevaluate those things. I'm gonna make a separate video for Venus retrograde. You can check that out. I'm gonna post that in July. Um, so on on the same day that Venus goes retrograde, the uh, Sun enters Leo. So again, uh, the Sun lights up your house of friendships. So the focus is somehow on your friendships. Um, so yeah, I mean this uh, transit occurs annually. So every year. Uh, from July 22nd until August 22nd, the focus is on your friendships. Um, yeah, and the sun is going to make a conjunction with Venus in your uh, friendships house. Uh, but I'm going to talk more about that in August. Uh, next, uh, on July 23rd, uh, we have Chiron uh, turning retrograde on the 19th degree of Aries. So for you, that is your relationship house. Uh, Chiron has been transiting your relationship house for a couple of years now. So it has been opening up wounds uh, in like uh, regarding your regarding the way you relate to others. Yeah, your relationship traumas maybe the way you relate to people. Um, yeah, like so Chiron is the wounded healer. So it, he's going to you know, open up the wounds uh, in order to heal that. Yeah. And so this Chiron uh, station in retrograde on July 23rd for a couple of months uh, is going to affect uh, Libras who have um, descendant on the 19th, uh, wait, uh, yeah, on the 19th degree of Aries, uh, or uh, Libras who were born in like uh, October uh, 9th, uh, yeah, on October 9th, uh, 10th, uh, 8th, yeah, those Libras are going to be affected. Uh, Libra risings who have um, your rising sign on the 19th uh, degree of Libra, you will feel it because the Chiron will station retrograde on your descendant. So something about your, something painful regarding your relationships. And this coincides with like the, this happened like right after Venus uh, stationing retrograde. So yeah, like some pain regarding your relationships um, is gonna somehow um, be brought up, like uh, be activated. Yeah. Uh, but uh, try not to be pessimistic because uh, uh, whatever opens up, like, it's gonna heal. Yeah, it, it should not bother you after that. Yeah. And then uh, on July 25th, we have the first quarter moon. Uh, that means uh, the seeds that were planted on, uh, at the new moon, metaphorically, you're gonna start uh, seeing the first tangible results, like the first, like, um, I don't know. Uh, bloom uh no not bloom when the seed opens up and starts growing yeah I, I don't know the name for it like english is not my native language so i apologize for that um so yeah and then uh, on july 28th mercury enters virgo until october 4th yeah so uh, mercury is gonna be in your uh, 12th house for uh, just two and a half months almost it's an extended stay because it's gonna go retrograde in your 12th house in august but i'm gonna talk more about that in august so yeah, Mercury entering your house of uh, imagination, mm, dreams, uh, subconscious, uh, creativity. Yeah, like it might be a good time to like, I don't know, be creative, like express uh, creatively um, your words. And like, uh, it might be a good time to think creatively. Yeah, I know Libras, you guys are creative in, in general, but this time you guys might be like extra creative, so to speak. So yeah. Uh, this is it for July. Um, at the beginning, as I said, you guys have that conjunction of uh, Sun and Mercury in your 10th house. And then you have a full moon in your 4th house and the Sun in your 10th house. So yeah, work-life balance stuff. Um, work-life balance, somehow uh, prominent for you. Uh, but again, as I said, this is not a lunar eclipse, so don't uh, expect your life to turn upside down at this full moon. It's gonna be fine. It's a good full moon. Uh, so yeah, use that energy to uh, party on July 4th, uh, for those of you who are in the States. Uh, yeah, and then uh, on July 6th, people might be a little bit moody, so beware. Uh, and then new moon on July 17th. Um, yeah, that one uh, should bring some news regarding your career, your work, um, your status. Uh, but I would say it's more about work. Uh, yeah, it does make a tense aspect, but still there are supportive aspects from Uranus and Neptune, so it should be uh, all right. Yeah, and expect news around this time. Um, what else? Uh, North Node enters your relationship house. Uh, 
yeah for a year and a half uh, on July 17th this is great news for those of you uh, who are single this is a great time to meet uh, someone special um, like not July 17th uh, I mean like this year and next year is a great time for you to commit to get married uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed this but like try to think of all the Scorpios in your life they have had this transit uh, for the past uh, year and a half and I know so many Scorpios who got married they're like uh, it's unbelievable yeah so that means now it's your turn to get married yeah that should be exciting and um, then uh, Venus your ruling planet stations retrograde on July 22nd for 40 days uh, yeah so take that time to reevaluate Mm, your values, your relationships, uh, how you spend money, uh, like your style. Uh, like I wouldn't recommend buying new clothes at this time because when Venus turns uh, direct, you're gonna, you're gonna be like, why did I buy these clothes? So yeah, like don't waste money on uh, new clothes uh, at this period. Mm, I would say it would be a good time to buy uh, used things actually, because uh, those who are selling uh, at um, during Venus retrograde, they won't know the true value of the things they are selling. So yeah, it's a great time to buy used things. Um, and so yeah, um, and Chiron turns retrograde in your seventh house, but I, as I said, it's gonna mostly affect the, those who were uh, born on October 9th. And yeah, uh, and or those of you who have your rising sign on the 19th degree of Libra, okay? Uh, so yeah, uh, I hope you guys have a pleasant July and I'll see you guys in August. Bye!